We're very, very lucky to have Dr. Nan Susu San with us today, uh, who has an interesting job of being a translator into English. Uh, many, many of her books have sold extremely well. Um, she's written on all sorts of things, including of local Shan interest, um, and some fiction work as well. So um, it's a great pleasure uh, to introduce her, and I'm sure we're going to be interested in what she has to say. I'd like to pass over to Do Nan Susu San now. Thank you very much. Do you want to use the microphone, or do you prefer not to? I don't need, I think. Right. No problem. My deepest respects to the venerable uh, Seyado, Dr. Damasami, and all and all sanghas and and all sanghas and the Lashins and Li people who are present here. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself, but as the Seattle also uh, had already introduced me, I am repeating it. I am Donang Susu San, wife of Usai Tomia, who is also uh, helping to build the SSPU at the present. I am in my uh, 72nd uh, year of age. <laughs> 72, 72 and nearly 72 years of age and I had worked as a middle and high school principal in Kunhing and Taungji. I am a native of Kunhing. I studied uh, in Taungji until uh, the high school passed and then I and then I studied at the Institute of Education and I got a PED degree. It is not because of the PED degree and as I have worked as a principal that I can uh, that I can speak and write some English. I think it is only because of my uh, of my learning and my interest. But they are not so. I'm I'm not saying that I'm very good at English. But after retiring, retiring, I retired in 1997, so many years ago. After retiring, after retiring, I don't have any, I don't have much to do, and I have spare time, and I'm interested in translating books. So I started to translate. The first book I, I will have to say, the Silk Road. The Silk Road. You all, you all may know. Most people know about it. The Silk Road, I am interested in it, and I have some obsession about it. This is the first book, I translated it, and it may be the hardest of it. So I have to take some uh, help from the author, Wu Mian Jue, to edit it for me. And I also won the Tone Foundation Prize for this book. And later, the books I did later were uh, quiet skies on Selwyn, and this is about old Taungji. It is written written by the daughter of a principal who, who came to work as, prin, as principal to the Shan Chief School, that is number two, basic education high school now, and, I, and the school I had also worked in for seven years at the southern part of the town. Uh, and the other books I, maybe this one is the third book I, I did. 
uh, half the sky. It is about uh, women's, women's right, women who are abused and, and, and something like that. Um, and also I did, uh, this one is the only fiction I did, and it is called Dolphin's Sunrise. I, I, I gave the name in Myanmar, Lim Bai Ayong U. It is the only uh, fiction uh, in, among my books, but it is good. But it is a good book. It is about animal rights, about the whales, and about the excessive uh, fishing they are doing that will deplete the, the ocean and, and the waters around us. And I also did Bangi Moon. Bangi Moon, you, all, you, you may also know about it because he is the uh, UNSG UN Secretary General and from Korea, a Korean. Now he is retired this year. Uh, but this is only an um, interview. interview with uh, the writer uh, Tom Plate. The last book I produced is this uh, Unbowed, written by Wangari Matai of Kenya. She, is, uh, she plant, the, the, the most significant uh, work she did is about planting trees in Kenya because the country needs to plant, uh, trees are needed to plant in that country, like our country. I, uh, frankly saying, I'm not a good speaker, and I haven't, uh, and I never, and I haven't done uh, a long speech or a presentation in English. I just speak English when I go abroad, and only short sentences. But I will have to try to do, do so now. Uh, but I write, I also write some blogs in English. These are translated from English to Burmese, and the blogs I, I write in English, and my blogger name is uh, softhesunhills.blogspot.com uh, continuously, softhesunhills. I write about uh, personal, my personal, personal and environmental and culture, uh, and about culture and, and travelogues, and some travelogues. If you are interested, you can look uh, for it in the internet. Uh, but writing is, uh, speaking is not as easy as writing. When writing, I can take as much as time to think about the words or look in the dictionary, but when speaking, it is not like that. But I'm trying, uh, I'm trying to do so. So I have to write because I don't have confidence much. I have to write what I'm going to say, and I think this presentation will end up in, 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 reading, <laughs> in reading my writings. So I'm going to, um, the, the Venerable Seattle, Seattle Dr. Damasami, he asked me to meet you and talk about my books, uh, to, my books to you, so, if, so as to give inspiration. But frankly saying, I'm not a great person that you should take inspiration from me. I'm just a translator among translators and not a famous one. And I had done it only as a hobby. But anyway, it is good to meet you to say something about my books, which I think uh, only a few people take it seriously. And uh, the Venerable uh, Dr. Damasami is one of the few who recognize my books and tell me to 
to, to, to see you and talk about them. And so I'm trying to, to do uh, my best and I thank him for, and also for you to come to listening patiently. I, I should add. So my, I will have to cut short my, about the, the books. The, the first book I, told, I already told you is this, The Silk Road. Many of you may have heard about it, uh, about The Silk Road. I, I gave it the name Ola Maji in Myanmar, and it is, uh, it is an ancient road used more than 2,000 years ago to communicate between China and the Western Europe, such as Constantinople and Rome. That road started in Xi'an, that, uh, at that time it is the capital of China, and went through the Gansu corridor, corridor to Danhuang and Kashgar, the back westernmost gate of China, then through the Middle East kingdoms like Samarkand to Tehran and Damascus and Rome. The distance was about uh, 2,000 miles. In those days, when they want to say about the distance, they won't say about uh, they won't say miles, but that uh, the time they have to cover in doing the the, the journey. That is also they would say with, uh, with uh, instead of two thousand miles, they would say six months travel, and it would take uh, this long because they have only to uh, they have only horses and camels to use. The road is not an easy one. It passes through mountains, mountain ranges like the Kunlun, Kunlun, Pamir, Hindu Kush, uh, Karakoram, and deserts like Taklamakan and Gobi, and in some places they pass through steppes or uh, grasslands. Weather was harsh, and many men and animals perished on the way. But men who would like to seek adventures uh, or opportunities risk their lives, their, their lives to go on such advent, adventurous journeys. You must have heard of Marco Polo, who traveled along this road uh, to seek opportunity in China, and truly he became something in the Chinese court. The great Xuan Zhang, uh, the, the priest or monk, what do you call uh, the great Xuan Zhang, a priest went through this road to acquire Tipitaka texts from India through a road that branches from the Silk Road. Uh, many may have watched uh, the drama Sun Wukong, uh, which was based on the life of the great Xuan Zhang. But most of the people who travel the Silk Road had one common com ambition, and that was to trade, trade between the East and the West. Uh, silk was the most important commodity produced in China and was much wanted in the West, such as Rome. So people from the West came uh, to China and, and buy silk and brought, uh, and, and brought to their country. And so the route, it got the silk road from that, uh, from that trade. So in this way, commodities were exchanged uh, through East and West on this road. With trade, religion such as Buddhism, Manichism, Zoroastrian, and later Islam also spread along this road. The exact period when Buddhism came to China cannot be told, it's said in this book. Uh, and in this book, there is much history of China and also cultures that flourished along this road. Uh, about 19th century, some adventurers like Oral Stein, Savan Hayden, Ne Elias did some exploring, mapping, and took away priceless antiques or relics, which are the wealth of the Silk Road to the country. Uh, for example, Oral Stein found and smuggled away thousands of scrolls of manus manuscripts, which were rich Buddhist paintings, and the world's oldest printed document, the Diamond Sutra from 6, 863 CE, from the caves of Danhuang, China. And uh, now I want to uh, there is no no there is no no one who can answer me what the Diamond Sutra is. 
and he one of the sutta from Mahayana Buddhism. He is the famous one of sutta from Mahayana Buddhism. Diamond yeah. sutta. Diamond sutta. Yes. And it is also it is existing now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that is the date is from the 863 863 CE, current era. Mm. Other other Westerners also did the same. They took with them what they could lay their hands on. Sometimes I found now now sometimes I found articles uh, written about uh, Dan Huang in magazines or journals. It is now called the Mogao Caves and also the Thousand Buddha Grottoes in Gansu uh, Province. And it is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is a popular tourist uh, destination now, and tourists can. Can, can visit selected caves with a guide. Now, if you, if you are interested, you can, you can read about it in, in this book. It is boring. <laughs> it is a little boring. <laughs> uh, it is fortunate that I that I read, that I write, that I have written blogs about my books. So I will have to read my blogs only to you to explain the, the books. But, uh, but some I, 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 I didn't write, uh, but, and some I have, I have here. So the book about the quiet skies on Selwyn, uh, about Dongji, I will cut some, some of it first, uh, some, of, some of it. The first book I translated was Quiet Skies on Selwyn. I think it is about 12 years ago. It is about Old Taungji, round, round about the beginning of the 20th century. The author is Ellen Top. She came to Taungji in 1906 with her father and family to live, to live here for 16 years until 1922. Her father has come, had come to work as a principal of the Shan Chief School in Taungji. This school was meant to educate the sons and relatives of the Sobwas, the chiefs of Shan State. So there are some parts related to Sobwas of that time, but not politically, politically only as parent and principal relationship. The, also, the author also described her childhood days in Taungji about the town, about the school, the picnics they, uh, they went, and about the extensive traveling. They like, English people like to like traveling very much. In those days, they go with carts, and they took everything they need uh, in five or six bullock carts. Even the bathtub they carry with them, the chairs, the beddings, they also took with them. You can find them in the, in the book. And they are very patient. From at that time, when they come to Taungji, uh, the railroad is only at Tazi. So from Tazi to Taungji, they had to travel 10, 10 days uh, by, by cut, by cut. The name Quiet Skies on Selwyn is meant for Taungji of that time, because in the 1930s, motor cars had started to arrive. And with the coming of the Second World War, so the sound of trucks and tanks and artilleries will also be penetrating into the once calm and tranquil skies of the Shan State. The author foresee it, and she was worried and wrote about what is going to happen in the future. But what will she say if she see Dongji as it is now? I don't even like Dongji now, friendly say. Oh, so crowded, so crowded, and so and too much uh, motorcycles and cars. It is not good to stay anymore. <laughs> yes, yes, it is not peaceful and tranquil like that, like those olden days. Mm. You can you can go and live in Lankai. You don't like. Them. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, I should. I, I should. I should. I think. <laughs> Now about half the sky, 
about half the sky. I, I, I translated it more complicated way, and it is uh, or is written on behalf of women, on behalf of abused women, and um, let's see. I brought I bought this book in Melbourne, Australia, when I am in Australia. Half the sky represented women of the world. Because women contributed half the population of the world. It is about some women in the world who are underprivileged and does not get the same opportunity as men. Uh, women who are abused sexually and mentally. And women and girls who have become rape victims. There are also chapters concerning women's health about women suffering from fistula in Africa and not enough doctors and hospitals to help them. And also that maternal health care is needing for every minute one woman is dying in childbirth. Judging from the book and from my own knowledge, the most abused women in the world are Muslim women. They don't have, I, 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 I dare not speak among Muslims. <laughs> they don't have equal rights with men. Some, some Muslim countries like Afghanistan do not let their girls go to school. Women have to cover themselves from head to toe, and when men can take as many wives as they, as they want, a woman cannot even have a wrong love affair. Otherwise, there are uh, some places where they will be stoned uh, to death or killed by their own family, which they call honor killing because the daughter has had shame, shamed them. Some are tortured, beaten, or dowered with exit. But apart from all these unpleasant things, women have to face, uh, there are some chapters that give gives hope for the future of women. And how, about how microcredit financing uh, can help family lives become, uh, become better by giving them to the women to handle the money. About how investing in girls' and women's education can help a region's economy be uh, become better and developed. Then, there also there are some cases where women challenge the uh, ready-to-kill ready rulers, rapers, pimps. For example, Usha Narayan, who is not afraid of the thug, who ruled the slum and lived like a king. He and his mobsters robbed, raped, murdered, and tortured. But Usha headed a group of slum dwellers and fought and killed him in the end uh, with one step each. Then they confessed, we all kill him, arrest us all, so no action cannot be taken against them. See about Sunita Krishnan, a small Indian girl. She is also a legendary among those who are fighting human trafficking. Mukta Mai of Pakistan, who used the compensation money for her being raped to build schools and, and because she believes in education. The last thing I want to say is that it is a good book. I will say all my books are good. <laughs> it is not to enjoy, but to feel. The full title of the book is Half the Sky, How to Change the World. So after someone has read it and wants to do something to help change the world, our world will become a better place and the theme the authors had targeted will be achieved. Uh, that, is, uh, that is for half the sky. And now Dolphin Sunrise, the fiction. This also I will have to make it short. It is written by Elizabeth Webster. I think she is the the, from the family of Webster who did the dictionary, maybe. I read it from the Reader's Digest condensed book, so it is not an original, but a condensed one. The main theme of the book is animal rights, whales and dolphins. Our world now has become an overpopulated one, uh, and food to feed all mouths is one problem, so men is squeezing all they can from land and sea to get food to feed all mankind. 
From seas and oceans, man uses all kinds of vessels, machineries, and nets to catch all kinds of sea animals. And even though there are rules concerning fishing, sometimes they are violated to suit the greediness of human beings. So many sea species are in danger of being extinct, and some had already been ex ex extinct, extinct forever. The hero of this book is Matthew, a young boy of 15 or 16. He became an orphan when fire broke out in his flat, killing his mother. During this incident, Matt rescued four uh, small children whose parents were at work, but broke a leg and got some burns. The children's parents were indebted to Matthew, and they took him to Cornwall in England, uh, a seaside place where they were going to stay free in a caravan. Matthew was a bright boy who can play the guitar well, especially classics, and also a whiz in computer. A whiz, I said, I, I got that, that word in the book, only whiz. <laughs> in Cornwall, he met Skip, the aqua club runner, and his girlfriend, Petra, who sometimes come to visit. He also met a lonely old man, Captain Verney St. George, who owns a shipping empire and had a mysterious past. While swimming in the sea, he also met and became friends with a dolphin whom he named Flight. Matt and Flight became very much attached to each other. When winter came, Matt and her family and many people went back to their home. The captain also went south where there is sunshine and warmth. Before he went, Matt worked a computer for the captain at his request and they came to like each other very much. The rest you can, you can read. You can read. In my second part of the blog, I will distribute it to you, and you can also uh, read the book as well. I, excuse me, I want to, can I sit? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. The book I didn't read, uh, I didn't write blog about is Laura Bush. So I write it um, only yesterday or today. The sixth book I translated was Laura, Laura Bush, Laura Bush's Spoken from the Heart. Laura Bush is the wife of U.S. number 43rd President George Bush. Mr. Bush was elected USA president in 2001 and served till 2009. I would like to tell how, how I come to translate this book. I asked a famous translator author, uh, how he chose books to translate, and he said, from the internet. So I look in the internet for, for bestsellers of 2011, 12, and I saw this book, and I uh, and I chose to translate this. As Mr. Bush's uh, presidency ended in two, 2009, and this book came out uh, in 11, we can see that uh, it was produced after the couple left the White House. And as its title is spoken from the heart, uh, it was Laura Bush's true story, her memoirs, from childhood to first lady. It has, this book has over 400, book, 400 pages in English. If I translate all, it would, it would become a, a, over 600 pages. So I, I, to, to, to make it not so thick, I cut short the life of Laura Bush's childhood days, and I, 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 I write the summary of it, and I start to uh, translate from the from the campaign, from the campaign they did to become president, and and that campaign also is is a long is a long time, nearly a year a year. Then, as you can guess, she wrote about her life at the White House. She described the White House itself, how it was managed, the functions and activities, parties, 
and entertainments. Uh, these entertainments included uh, children on Children's Day to VIPs, such as head of states, kings and queens, etc. Also about important state visits abroad, such as UN meetings and G8 meetings. There is a chapter about how she also tried to help Burma and Burma and Do Aung San Suu Kyi. But, uh, at that time, they are under pressure of the military rule. She even went to a refugee camp in Thailand uh, and met like uh, people like Cynthia Mao. It is written in one chapter near the end. They also had to face some disasters uh, during their life in the White House. In the year they came into office, uh, on September 11, uh, the Islamic extremist, extremist attacked New York's uh, World Trade Center when, uh, where about 3,000 people were killed. It caused much pain on the president that he declared a global war on terrorism and caused the war in Iraq. Shortly after Bush's second term in office, uh, the Hurricane Katrina also hit the southern part of U.S when uh, 1,500 people were killed. Laura Bush uh, wrote, all about, uh, wrote about all the good and the bad, the sorrow and the joy, the victories and the failures, which they have to face as president and wife. Mm. Although it is a thick book, when I first read it, I, am, I, I get interested in, and I read it to the end, and then I uh, translated. Now, the Ban Ki Moon, you all, you all, all of you know Ban Ki Moon, he is the secret, Secretary General of the United Nations. In short, he is called UNSG, Secretary General. Ban Ki Moon, the eighth United Nations secret, Secretary General from January 2007 to 2016, December. He was a Korean diplomat before he became the UNSG. I came by this book while I was visiting a bookshop in Bangkok. When I look at the date on which it was produced, I saw that it was recently published and circulated. I haven't, uh, I haven't ever seen uh, a book on Ban Ki Moon in Burma. So I bought this book and decided to, uh, to translate it. I did it quite quick. Uh, only about, I'm taking only about one month. And the, and the result, uh, because, uh, so that it can come out before other authors, other authors do. And the result I get is uh, some misprints and uh, when one double pages. <laughs> Because I have to, about producing books, I want to tell, I want to explain some. Uh, books are produced by producers. Does the writers only write it? But I am not famous and I don't have a producer, so I have to produce it myself using my own money, whether I get it back or not. Uh, so I, after writing it, I, 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 I don't type it that the other people do. And after typing, I have to edit it again and again, and then, uh, and then produce it. So I cannot sit calm after translating. The other authors can, they just give the draft to the publisher, to the producer, only like that. I'm not like that. This book, Ban Ki Moon, is only conversations with, Tom, with author Tom Plate. So they are interviews with the author in which UNSG gave his views, his beliefs, and his efforts on various issues and crises. From these conversations, you come to see his way of living, his way of traveling, how he has to cope with, the, uh, with loads of work, 
Sometimes he has to give 10 speeches in one day, but he has six speech writers, it said, that he doesn't have a private plane. He has to travel by commercial plane. So he has to time, he has to spend uh, many, uh, much time on the, on the plane. Like uh, he said, when going to Pakistan because it is flooded, he spent um, 30, 40 hours on the plane to stay 10 hours in Pakistan. On the plane, uh, he has to waste much time. Now the last book is Unbowed by Wangari Matai. It, it, she gave it the, the title Unbowed, but I, I, I gave the, my, my title in Burmese book Seyang uh, Chitu because it is about planting trees. I wrote, a, I, I have a blog about, about it. Wangari was a native of Kenya in East Africa. She grew up in the countryside, which was blessed with Earth's abundant yields. When she was eight, she went to school. Uh, she went to school, which was three miles away. After she finished high school, she was selected to study, to study in the US uh, through the Joseph P. Kennedy Foundation, where she studied for her science degree majoring in biology at Mount Scholastica University. When she returned to Kenya, she worked as a lecturer at the School of Veterinary Medicine of University College of Nairobi, where she also pursued her doctoral studies in Germany and at the, at, and at the University of Nairobi and obtained a PhD degree in 1971. While she served on various boards of many organizations concerning environment and humanity causes, she found out that the environment of Kenya was degrading due to overlocking, like our country. Because there were no trees on the hills, when the rain came, the soil was washed down into streams and rivers and gradually into the sea. Uh, streams and rivers were also dried up and caused livelihood of the people to become difficult and biodiversities to become extinct. Firewood for cooking, wood for fencing um, also became scarce. Because the topsoil was washed away, vegetation did not yield abundantly as they used to be, and this caused people and animals not to have enough food. To solve these problems, she introduced the idea of community-based tree planting, and then continued to develop this idea into a broad-based grassroots, grassroots organization, the Green Belt Movement, whose main focus were poverty reduction, environment conservation, and women's right through tree planting. In this way, she came to plant 30 million trees in Kenya. Environmentalists usually turn into politicians, so it was like this with Wangari. The government at the time in Kenya was under the leadership of one strong man who did not rule the country democratically. While the government's party was made strong by bribing and corruption, the oppositions were being pressed. Those who opposed the government were thrown into jail uh, where, they charged, where they were charged by corrupt, corrupt lawyers and judges. The government also mismanaged their scanty uh, resources. Their resources are forests and parks and ate money from abroad. I cannot help thinking, oh, how like our country and the government and our government. But then our, our government and country are far wealthier than Kenya, but in the end, the two countries will be depleted for of its resources if nothing is done to prevent this mismanagement. So Wangari Matai became an, a political activist. 
and she and she led women in protecting parks and forests, which the government was using for their own benefit. She get she got many awards from foreign countries, and in 2004 she got the uh, Nobel Peace Prize for contributing to sus sustainable development, democracy, and peace. I like this book because it gives me inspiration and admiration. I uh, frankly say, I believe it or not, while I, was, I am reading the chapter about planting trees, I really want to be like her, especially, especially when we also are in a dire uh, situation to plant trees. But I am old now and not in a position to do so. I wish there will be someone or some organizations that can do like Wangari to lead people in planting trees and not depend only on the government. And this is the uh, this is my 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 blog written on uh, Anbao. If you if you want to read uh, the, the the books will be in the I have to donate in the to, to the library and I will distribute my uh, my blogs to you which I have cut short. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Most important to one. Actually, contrary to what you said, um, I find you to be a very good and clear speaker. Uh, and if you say you translate as a hobby, it seems to be a very useful and important one the work that you're doing. Um, I really feel impressed with the the, the, the huge range of books that you're doing. But obviously, you choose works which interest you and that matter to you, and that came over in your talk. So thank you again. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Would anyone like to ask questions? Mm. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm Agasena from Kingdom. Very uh, interesting book, and I've learned a lot from it. I have two questions to put over to you. First, about the silk root, the book silk, silk root. root. I've heard that there is a plant from the Yunnan, from northern Burma to India. There is a plant of silk root. Have you run across that in, in the book? Uh, I think it is only the uh, more modern road, not not this old silk road. I think, mm. oh, because you can see the the map, so the the map of this in this book. See from Xi'an, mm -hmm. mm, and she this, uh, and until this, it is oh, China, yeah. Keshka. Uh -huh. Keshka is the is the uh, the, the westernmost uh, gate of China, yeah, right. and then through Samarkand to Tehran, and then to Rome, oh, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not wrong, I have read about the uh, GH rules. Something he is that, that from the Yunnan he to the northern Burma to. Oh, Burma that is, that may be the modern the, the, the modern day Silk Road, road maybe. Uh, <laughs> okay, there's uh, another question. I have one more question. You have translated about the women's right. Yes. And you have taken the example from Africa to India to Pakistan. Yes. Uh, have you aware the women's right have been abused in our country? Uh, like uh, we have a Swan or Shan Women Net, Net, Action, Action Net, Network in Shan Women, they published a book licensed to read. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, have you aware that and have you have any plan to write about the women's rights have been abused in our country? Have you had any? No. <laughs> Frankly saying, no. <laughs> I haven't seen the book. Um, and, and in this book, uh, it is also up there. There are also pages uh, about women in the in in Southeast Asia, yeah, in yeah. Thailand, in uh, Malaysia, and like and like I, that. I, I just want to know: Have you any have any plan to, to write about Shan women's rights? We have been abused for many decades now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my my last question. Uh, I have seen you have translated in many books in, in Burmese, uh, many of them in Burmese. I'm not sure have you written any Shan book or do you have any plan to write in Shan? 
It is shame to say that I don't even mm, uh, write or read Shan. <laughs> it is so shameful. Yeah, you can come here and learn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 72. I'm in my 72 uh, two year. I'm the one too old to learn. <laughs> <laughs> like Uche Pue. <laughs> Okay. And uh, I have one question. Uh, now you uh, translate a number of books. And do you, would you like to do some research and present your own idea? I, do, I, no, I, I don't have any idea. You are I just stay at home. <laughs> I don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, you, you, will not, you will not see me often here because I don't, I don't go out much. I don't socialize. Apart from today, you are socializing. Ah, because because the when the venerable, um, the the the, the venerable I doctor. I was just uh, invited that though venerable is not here, please, please come and share your knowledge. <laughs> uh, because he asked me, and I have to. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. What makes you yeah, interested in to translate the books? Uh, I, want to, I want to write, but I cannot write. That is the, the, the direct answer. I want to write something, but I cannot write. So I translate. Um, maybe one day you will write. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question? Do you have a, a favorite among all the books that you've translated? Is the one, you, is the one that you've enjoyed more than the others? Mm. I think I like all. <laughs> I think I like all of my books. <laughs> I have one question. Yes. In, in your translation, what, what is the most difficulty that you face when you are translating the book? Ah, uh, it. Yes, there are some difficulties. Especially, I think, in this Pola Maji, in this Silk Road. Uh, some are easy, some are not, uh, some are not very easy. You sample the wood very quickly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yes, yes, yes. Maki Moon, I finished it in one month. <laughs> to be ahead of other authors. Saying cannot. I try to read to, to do write blocks only. Uh, I have over 85 now blocks. You can you, you can look in the internet. Uh, um. In Pami or in English? In English. Oh. Simple English. Not 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 very difficult English. I can read uh, I can write only simple English. And sometimes I have to get help from dictionaries uh, from from the internet. 18 over yes over the last blog I wrote is and about the combine and make into a book that's good you, you mm -hmm. can uh, have some suggestions yeah. in our yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah you 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 studied my blogs and you you give me some advice if I should do or not okay. maybe it is not mm, not up to the standard Yes. Okay, this is, uh, you already answered my question because it was the same was uh, the same question of Venables attacking us. I, to be frank with you, uh, a week ago, a week ago, I bought one of your book, mm. and and when I see uh, the, when I see Nang Nang Shantris and I get your bios, and I know who you are. <laughs> and I was, Which book, sir? Uh, the Rolla Bush one. Uh, Rolla speaking Bush. from the heart. Laura Bush, yes. Because it is it only once on the print. No. <laughs> and I. Mm. 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 Yeah. And as uh, uh, after that, I, I, I see you, I, uh, I, I, I saw your book, I have a doubt that, oh, uh, chance, uh, there's a, 
less than less than less than ten books are only published in Chiang in a year. So I would like to beg you to study Chiang. <laughs> 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 so it, uh, it won't take long, so maybe two or three weeks, it's enough. Oh, I admire um, the lady who wrote about the Shan history oh, much. Yeah. Kirsten. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I admire yeah, yeah. her much. But I cannot be like her, I think. <laughs> so, so. Everything possible. <laughs> <laughs> like Uji like <laughs> 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 you just look like Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I think he is proud of you. I am not very well, and I don't want to burden myself with the heavy objects, with heavy things. Okay, one question and questions. Uh, yes. when, where were you in 1977? In Kunting, sir. It is my native town. It is, it is my native town and also my husband's. We are from Kunhing. Well, I think we should thank uh, Nan Susu San. San again. Very informative, um, very good English. We all enjoyed it very much. Oh, yes, not so much, sir. <laughs> So obviously, I have missed. <laughs> <laughs> I have missed um, what you say. Um, a big event. Very <laughs> informative. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, thank you. I should take inspiration from you because you are going to be teachers uh, to teach uh, the. Buddhist uh, Teaching. teachings. It is it is hard. I wish sometimes I wish when I have when I have to 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 write blogs about uh, concerning religion. I don't know the words. I the last blog I, I I wrote is the the water. I I write by myself the water dripping ceremony in Kunhing because we went there. And uh, I, when I asked the, 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 the priest there, so, so who? Sandadika. No, 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 Sandadika. Uh, he said water pouring, but I like water dripping. Pouring is pouring much. Dripping is secha, isn't it? So I used the water dripping ceremony in Kunhing for my blog's title. And I don't know mo u, what do you call mo u? <laughs> because they do they did opening ceremony for two entrance gate, yes, yes. It should be entrance gate. And he said he also did said entrance gate. Now easy to communicate. Yes, I have to to yeah. <laughs> I have to take um, some of your telephones uh, number when I need to ask something. Mm -hmm. But we think we may have more things to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> so I wish there will be dictionaries for religious words. And when I translate birds, the name of birds cannot translate into Burmese birds and animals and veggies and also like that. I wish there will be dictionary about those things, some dictionary about those things. I have a, a Burmese to English dictionary, but it is not, uh, not, not that there, there is not much word in that. And then sometimes you may have to have some picture dictionary for children. There are some <laughs> but even if it is, it, it, it have pictures, how can we see which, what, what word we call? Yeah, you can see English word and then some Burmese 
Now you can check Google. Yeah, Google cannot answer. I also, I also look for for them in the in Google, but Google cannot 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 see because there is no Burmese word in there. <laughs> there are some some words about birds in the in the in the book I'm doing now, the chance at home. Chance at home. Chance at home. Yes, I, yeah. Mm. <coughs> just about hundred years. Yes. Yes, yeah. It is. It is over a hundred years. Mm. So. Okay, thank so thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for. <laughs>
뭐 생물 안 많이 나와 혹시 기억? Okay, thank you. 